what I would say is one of my favourite passages in the Bible. Um, that's that wonderful story of Philip and uh, his faithfulness and what I call the mission of the Bible. Um, and I don't know about you, but the Bible, you know, God's Word is just unbelievably transforming. Transform my world personally um, was the reason that I came to faith in Christ in the first place. But just to paint a bit of a picture, just to give you a bit of a scenario of that story. Um, here is Philip doing what Philip does and an angel of the Lord comes and speaks to him and says, I want you to go down a desert road and travel towards Gaza. Now, I don't know about you, but if you can t tell by my physique, exercise is not a friend of mine. <laughs> and uh, if the angel of the Lord was to come and say, Mark, I want you to go and run down a road for about 300 to 400 kilometres, I'd be going, you sure, Lord? <laughs> you sure that's what you want? But Philip obediently goes. Now, I want to I set the scene for who this man is. This is a man who knows God, hears his voice, and obeys. And I'll set, a, I'll set a challenge as one of my first points, and that is this for us personally. When we read just that little passage that kicks it off, the question that we are, need to ask ourselves when we do read that passage is, Hey, do I, will I hear God if he speaks to me? Now, the Bible, as you read through the Old Testament right up to this point in particular, and, and, and very soon beyond, is just rich with God's, the angel of the Lord, coming and speaking to people, either whispering in their ear, a finger on the wall, a burning bush. You know, God speaks to people. And what is, I guess, important is are we willing to listen. Now, I imagine that Philip is taking the time out to spend time with God to listen. Do we have an environment in our world where we would take the time to listen to God and hear what he has to say? There's a personal challenge for us in that. Do we have space in our world where we would take the time to listen? We live in a very busy world now, don't we? You know, we, and it's, a, it's a fantastic, wonderful way in which we can excuse it if we want to. You know, oh, look, I'm just so flat out. It's so busy. It's, I've got this to do, that to do. I've got, you know, all these, all these responsibilities. They, we, we, uh, we did a survey, um, and uh, in that survey, we asked a group of people, you know, why is it people today don't read the Bible? Number one answer was they're just too busy just too busy to read the Bible. And I think to myself, I wonder if that's really a, a, an excuse. You know, look, if you could excuse me for a sec, I just need to stop from preaching at the moment because I've got my iPhone here and I just need to update my Facebook status, if that's okay with you. We find ways to make ourselves busy, don't we? You know, look, I'd love to spend some time with you, God, but, oh, look at the time, Master Chef's on. <laughs> Who's a Master Chef fan? Sorry if I insulted anyone there. <laughs> but I want to talk to you today about the mission of the Bible. Now, I know that you are very efficient people and that you guys, you, you maximise your effort. And the reason why I know that is, well, to give you a bit of an introduction, yes, my name is Mark Owen. I'm the State Director for the Bible Society of Queensland, but I'm also related to your pastor. Um, so who those that don't know, Gillian and Brenda, who's my wife, are sisters. So I'm, uh, I'm the brother-in-law. Um, who here has helped Don and Jill move house? I'm sh is there anyone here? Now, the people that helped Don and Jill last move house or one time before I helped out as well, you guys, you know how to move house. You have a normal six by four trailer and you will fill every part of it. The, when, they help, when they help move, the wheel arches had stuff strapped to it, the little A-frame at the front had stuff strapped, and it was about a 12 foot high. <laughs> I reckon there were overhead power lines that were in trouble with that trailer. I was just amazed. I, I sat back and looked at it. I went, wow, that's impressive, you know. But, so for me, I, but when I look at that, I think to myself, man, that's impressive people. They've thought to themselves, you yeah, know, we can do that in one load. 
you know, let's not waste time doing two loads for packing and unpacking, or you know, whatever. We can do it in one load. So I want to give you, I want to give you a heart for mission for this community and beyond, using the greatest resource that God ever gave us, His Word which is really, really exciting. So the, to set the scene, okay, this is a fantastic scene. So Philip has been spending some time with God, as it says there, and the angel of the Lord says, go for a run. So Philip's off there running down this road from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, just to paint a bit of a picture, I just want to I I help you visualize a bit of a map. So just imagine we've got Jerusalem's about here and Gaza's about down here somewhere. To the right of Jerusalem is the Dead Sea. Okay, beyond that, is, is what, was, what was known as the, the regions known you know, throughout history as Babylon and up in north a bit of Syria. So we've got what's Israel here, to the, which is Jerusalem to Gaza. And literally Jerusalem's pretty well to the right-hand side and Gaza's right across the country to the left. And then over here is the Mediterranean Sea. And then down south here is the Red Sea. It's an amazing little part of the world, if you think about it. It is where... All roads pretty well had to travel through there. And history will show that that area, that road that they travelled on from Jerusalem to Gaza, as you read your Bible, will tell you that that was a major road. It was a desert road, but it was a major arterial in today's society where lots of trade would happen, where countries would go from one place to the other. And Israel was the gatekeeper. Really, for people to come from the north or the northeast, come around and come down through there, below that over here is Egypt, and below that was a region known as Cush, okay, which is where Ethiopia is today, and the Sudan, but Ethiopia is today. So this, Philip, this, this Ethiopian who's travelling on his chariot, he's heading home. He's been to Jerusalem to spend time um, at the temple and to, and, to ex, and to experience the Jewish culture and to experience God. Now, Ethiopia at that time was very, and, and throughout history actually for a lot of time, was a very spiritual country. They're a very spiritual country. They, they, they are always continually in search of, of closeness to God. Now, whether that's the God that we know, or other gods, if you want to check out the history of Ethiopia, they certainly went through some tumultuous times. But here is Philip travelling on this major trade route. It's an amazing part of the world. You know, major oceans join there. Lots of histories happened in this area and throughout that area. Um, you know, the, Ethiopia was not just a brand new thought up country at that point either, okay? I mean, the Queen of Ethiopia tra has tra travelled to go visit Solomon, King Solomon. You know, we're talking 1400 years before. You know, and here they are, so, the, here they are um, you know, this, 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 this history of relationship was always there. So an Ethiopian travelling in his chariot is not an unusual thing, okay? Just so you get that idea. But this Ethiopian is like one of the big wigs. Okay, he's the treasurer. So you've got to picture the scene. Here is Philip running down this road, dust flying everywhere, you know. And all of a sudden, here is this majestic sight. It would have been, it would have been I reckon, a, 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 a convoy. But the, at the front would have been this absolutely magic chariot. You know, the best chariot. Think of the best car in the world that you love. And this is what this chariot was like. It would have been covered in gold and jewels, and it would have been really flashy. They would have had a, would have had a, you know, a, a, a mighty driver would have been at the front. These fantastic beasts pulling this chariot along. It would have been an amazing sight to see as you come running around the corner. You know, Philip would have seen this thing and gone, "Wow, sun gleaming off the jewels and the gold." And here is, and and here is this Ethiopian with this piece of paper, parchment looking puzzled, reading it out loud to himself, trying to get his head around this, telling the driver, hey, slow down, it's too bumpy, I can't read it properly. <laughs> you know, just to get his head around it all. You know, and, and, and Philip comes running up beside this chariot, obediently again, as God told him to, 